Hello again guys and welcome to one of the most important topics or actually the most in demand topic in the industry which is the PLC wiring how do we wire our PLC how do we wire our sensors and so in this course I will tell you a complete guys on this PLC wiring that contains six lectures explaining the PLC wiring in details step by step in the first lecture we will learn how to power up our PLC and how to wire our digital inputs and in the second lecture we will know the different wiring types of our digital inputs which are syncing versus sourcing and on the third lecture we will know the different types of our sensors we have digital sensors that are NPN or PNP and how to wire them then we will go and talk about wiring our analog inputs and they come in two wires three wires or four wires analog inputs and on the fifth lecture we will talk about digital outputs and how to wire them and finally on the sixth lecture we will talk about analog outputs so we will not talk about them in 2d drawings we will actually have 3d drawings of all with detailed drawings and explanation okay and you can see here the first four will talk about inputs and the last two are about outputs to understand the wiring fully we need to actually watch all of these lectures okay so what does this mean this means actually after you watch all these six lectures you will be able to connect any sensor to any plc just make sure you read the manual and the wiring diagram whether it is siemens plc allen bradley plc delta mitsubishi any brand actually okay you will understand the general idea and we will learn actually on s7 1200 plc from siemens but you can apply the same concept and knowledge to any other brand remember guys don't memorize but understand how you wire okay all right in this lecture we will talk about powering up our plc and connecting our digital inputs as we saw before if you look at Siemens compact PLCs they come in three different options DC 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 AC DC relay and DC DC relay the first one here the first column will talk about the power supply input the second column will talk about the inputs like the sensors the uh, switches and all and the last one talks about the outputs the digital outputs okay so let's actually start with the power supply which is the first column please guys just walk with me step by step so we can understand it clearly so the supply voltage if you choose the type of DC 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 then you can have a DC which is 24 volts DC and this is from the manual or you can choose the AC okay and for the AC the rated voltage can be 120 volts or 230 volts just make sure that you read the manual and this depends on the country so if you are if if in your country is single phase 120 volts AC and if you are in a country with a single phase of 230 then you need to power it with 230 volts AC but just make sure that the PLC is rated for that voltage okay and you will read it actually in the PLC manual and you will read it in the PLC device itself so let's take the DC you see here in the DC notice here you have L plus and M okay and you can see here this arrow is going inside the PLCs so this means this is a power input and for the L plus you will connect the positive terminal of your DC power supply and the M is the zero voltage so you will connect the zero terminal of your power supply okay this is very clear guys this is how you power up your 
This is how you power up your PLC that is rated with a power supply of 24 volts DC. Okay. What if your PLC is an AC? Then it's the same. You connect one terminal to the L1 and you connect the zero terminal to the neutral. Okay. So L1 will have 120 volts or 230 volts and the neutral will have zero volts. Very easy. Now we have finished with the power supply input. Let's go to the digital inputs. But first, let me tell you what do we mean by digital inputs. Digital inputs are inputs that send a signal to the PLC on or off. So they are like switches either switch on or switch off. And examples of these inputs are push buttons, selector switches, toggle switches. They can be limit switches. If they are triggered, they will be on. They will send a signal to the PLC. And if no one touches them, then they will be off. Also float switches to detect water level, if there is water or not. And you have encoders and you have photoelectric sensors. And encoders actually are digital inputs because every time they rotate they will send a signal or a pulse of on okay and then off on off on off so every time it rotates one milli or uh, it based on the specification of the encoder it will send a signal a pulse of on so in one full rotation it may send maybe 1000 pulses or so so this is considered also a digital input okay and and when we talk about digital inputs, they can be all DC, DC, DC. So S7, 1200, Siemens, PLC, family, all have their digital inputs powered by DC only. They cannot be powered by AC. And this makes it very easy for me to explain to you guys. So the digital inputs can be powered by DC in two ways. One way is to use the external power supply to power our digital inputs. The other way is to use internal power supply. What do I mean by this? So this is the 2D wiring diagram from the manual. I will not talk about the digital outputs in this lecture, so I will remove it. And I will also not discuss the analog inputs and outputs. So let me remove it. And now we are left with the digital inputs. And you can see here, DI, digital input, DIA, and digital input B. So we have 14 digital inputs. 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and then 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 14 different digital inputs. And don't worry, you can see here we have one and here one. Actually, they are different, and we will learn about these in TIA portal software, maybe after 10 lectures, how we differentiate between these two, okay? All right, and notice here, as we saw before, this is the income arrow. This means this is to power our PLC. And this arrow here indicates that this is the internal power supply. This power supply, the PLC, can give a 24 volts DC power supply to any outside device. So we will not talk about internal power supply here. So let me remove these two arrows and I will remove also my writings. Okay, so you can use the same DC power supply, the negative terminal, you will connect it to 1M. What does this 1M mean? 1M means the common and we will know more about it in the next lecture. But the negative terminal of our power supply will go to the 1M. And the positive one will go to our digital inputs, like the switches, the sensors, and all, okay? And the other end of our switches or digital inputs will go to our inputs, zero or one or two or three or four. And we will see one example on this, okay? What if we use internal power supply? So in internal power supply, let me remove this external one. And we will connect the zero, which is the zero volts, the M that's coming outside of the PLC to one M, to our common. And the positive will be connected to our uh, push buttons. And the other end will go to the PLC. So this actually from inside is connected to one M, okay? 
So now we have the full circuit complete. So from the positive, okay, it will go to our push button or switch, and then it will go to our PLC input, the signal, and then it will come back to the negative to 1M, and then 1M is connected to the zero. You can see here, and now we have a complete circuit. Now the PLC will sense there is a signal. The signal is on. And if we cut it, then it will sense the signal is off. It will not read any signal. Okay? And we will understand this in detail, how it is inside wired in our next lectures. Okay? All right. When do we use external power supply or internal power supply? If you have all these inputs as push buttons or selector switches or any device that does not use power, then you can use the internal power supply. But if you have so many inputs, like if you have uh, 20 inputs or 30 inputs or 50 inputs, and some of them need power supply, like some of them are photoelectric sensors or or some of them, like our encoders, they actually power other devices, then you need to use external power supply because the external power supply will be able to give you more ampere and it will be able to feed all your field devices. So always I recommend to use external power supply and if there is a short circuit, then the external power supply will get damaged and the circuit breaker will trip and then you can just replace the external power supply. But if any of the, your devices get a short circuit while you are using internal power supply, then the internal circuit inside the PLC may get damaged. And this will damage the whole PLC and it will cost you a lot more to replace one PLC than to replace a power supply. And also it will cost you money and time, okay? so. Most of the time, go with external power supply. And now let's look how do we wire our PLC in 3D diagram. On 3D, we will start with the external power supply. So we will use this power supply. So we need to first power our PLC. And as we saw, we will take the 24 volts power supply and give it here to the L plus input and the negative one will go to the M, okay? Now we have powered our PLC. So how do we power or connect our input like push button or a switch? We will get the first end from 24 volts power supply and the second end will go to one of our PLC inputs, like input one, zero or two or three or four, any of these inputs, okay? And we need to actually connect our 1M. So we will use this zero also to connect our 1M. So now we have powered our digital inputs using the external power supply. Notice we did not use the internal power supply. So what if we want to use the internal power supply? Then this is the same. We need to actually power our PLC. It's the same. It does not change, but to power up or to send a signal to our PLC for our digital input, then we will take from the L positive here, it goes through our push button, and then it will go to our input. And for the zero volts, we will connect it to 1M here. Okay, so now we are using the internal power supply of our PLC. Okay. And you can do the same with all the other push buttons or toggle switches or selector switches. Okay. So now we are finished with the digital inputs, but th there is really important topic, the second part, which is the syncing and sourcing. And this will be in the next lecture. All right. That's it for this lecture. See you in the next lecture. Thank you guys.